Welcome back friends to the shop. Today, we're going to attempt to build the perfect hammer handle. I'll tell you what, building the perfect hammer handle is not as easy as you might think. You, there is a temptation to try to reinvent the wheel, and I, and I did that with axe handles, and I, well, it was a basically a waste of many years of my effort. You stick to what uh, has evolved, you know, through hundreds of years of use. So that's why I'm such a huge advocate of finding these old, or, or hanging on to these old tool handles when you find them. So these are various ones that I've made, and these have all been made by hand. You can see this is one of the first ones that I did, and it's, it's not very good, but I seem to kind of gravitate and I like to have that, that swell in the middle. It feels good uh, to me in the hand because usually when you're using these hammers, you're choked up on them a little bit. They're, they're small hammers. They're made for fine detail work um, and you do end up choking up on them. And Rarely do you use the outside of it. So some interesting things. Um, one of the, th this is a cool one. So this is one of my saw filing hammers and I was really like, this is an Atkins and I was really lucky to find the original handle shape. This is not the original handle, but it is a, a near exact duplicate of what the original handle was. It was just carved out to me by hand and I very much enjoyed it. I like the palm swell uh, on this, but I don't like the way it tapers back. What I've been finding is I like, I like to have a little bit of a taper in there but a little bit more consistent. This here is a perfect example. This is the other one, you know, the mate to the to the handle, the head that we're going to be putting the deal on today. And this has a very a ple or very a pleasing feel to it. Um, it's got that swell. I like a, a narrow in here in the center. For some reason, it just it makes me feel like a. It's more of a precision instrument than a, cl a clunky or blocky club. And you see, there's very little swell back with a little bit of a of a flip. Uh, towards the end. Now here is, this is the one that I showed in the thumbnail yesterday. This is really a cool find. This is a, a very old Indian fire handle, Tennessee. And this is when they were making handles for guys that knew how to discern, you know, that, that, that expected the best. And this I think is probably the high water mark. I mean, they've put a, a varnish on there. They've burnished and they've burnt the handle, but li just little details like they, they quit they taped that off. They didn't varnish the top there where it goes into the head and it's a uh, grain orientation is good. It's, it's nice. It's a, uh, it's a cool handle. Um, but it, unfortunately it's too small for this little guy here. It's just not going to work, but I am hopeful to find something that that will fit. So that leads us to what feels the best in my hand. And that's this one right here. Uh, so we're going to go with this, which very well may be the original handle. So how do we duplicate this on the lathe? Well, I'm not really sure. I watched a couple YouTube videos and we're going to try to figure this out together. And what was done in the YouTube videos was um, they took and they traced it on a piece of paper like so. And that gives us our basic shape. And now we can draw and measure and get some data points here. Actually, that pencil didn't work. I couldn't really see the line. So th this will be, a, of course, we have to account for the thickness of the pen, but this will be a easier to read. We'll use the Sharpie here because we're going to want to use this um, when we're building the new handle. Okay, there basically we have it. It's probably an eighth over, a quarter over overall, if I had to guess. Okay, this gets us a place where we can start. Here's what I did, and this is the plan. So I've actually taken, we've taken some measurements across here and recorded exactly what we have. So what we have at the very widest point, we've got an inch and a quarter, two and a half inches in, we're an inch and an eighth, five inches in, we're an inch, three quarters, five eighths at the smallest, and then up to 13 sixteenths. And then of course, we ran out of paper there, but we will have to measure the head. So that's gonna give us a benchmark. So what I'm hoping to do is if we put this on the lathe, we can set uh, these caliper deals here to the thickness that we want and we can measure these out. We can go along. So this is the billet that we're going to use. I have two choice. I have, can't decide here on which one I should start with. So the widest portion of this handle is an inch and a quarter. So I've ripped a billet of, of hickory at an inch and a quarter and then I've ripped a second one at an inch and a half. Now this, what I'm wondering is would, if we do inch and a quarter, that's what we need to finish at. There's not going to be room to remove the tool marks and to sand it. And it's ultimately going to end up too small. So I think we should probably, we'll go over a quarter and we'll start with an inch and a half. That gives us an eighth 
uh, each side to make that work. So we have this beautiful, clear um, American hickory handle with a nice grain in it uh, that's going to be a perfect billet for this. So as you can see here, what we need to do is once we get it chalked up in the lathe is we need to do our two and a half or five or seven, nine and ten, cut down to those points and then pull or, or I guess I guess remove all the wood to those. So let's uh, let's start, see how it goes. I, I don't know very little about working with lathes, so we're kind of uh, learning together here. I'm so annoyed with myself. My friend Stu showed me a better way to do this in the shop and I completely forgot about it. So I'm back to the my old simple ways. I really should have paid better attention to the my, my wood shop class. <laughs> All this stuff. Okay, so uh, I think this is called the tailstock here. Uh, this is the, I don't even know what you call this thing, the chuck or the spur that came with it. And I had some scary moments on this one because, boy, once those teeth dig in and if you put too much pressure, uh, uh, man, that wood's got to go somewhere. These lays are powerful. Anyway, my buddy Stu bought, brought me this one here. It's a safety tip and that fits in there. So what happens is if, uh, if you put too much pressure on it, it just spins rather than uh, uh, tries to kill you and take out your window. So I'll put my diagram right here. So the dude on the YouTube channel, he seemed to be all knowing about this. Um, and so what he did was he marked, he came over here and he marked this. So we have, we've got a two and a half, right? Right there. We've got a five. We got a, a seven. These are our reference points. We got a nine. And we got a ten and a half. Right here. Now if we turn on the lathe, can we see these these marks? Yes, we can. The problem I have here is I don't even know what I don't need I've got some I've got these lathe tools and but I don't know what they're for. I don't know what they're for. So um, going off of memory, the, the one that the guy used to cut these grooves, it looks something like 